We've been making bread for thousands and thousands of years. And there is evidence going right back to the Egyptian times, 3,000 years ago, where there are hieroglyphs that show bread or sourdough bread being made alongside beer that is brewed. And this relationship became more and more formal over the years. And I came across a reference in this book, A Treatise in the Art of Bread Making by A. Eldon. On page 88, there is a reference to how to make bread that will never be bitter by James Stone. And Eldon refers to the fact that it frequently happens in summer season that the brewers, in order to prevent their beer from turning sour, are obliged to use more hops than usual. The consequence is that the yeast is very bitter and gives a disagreeable flavour to the bread. To obviate this inconvenience, Mr Stone has recommended the following method of raising a bushel of flour with only a teaspoon of yeast. And being ever curious, I found a copy of this complete method or complete or a method of effectually raising a bushel of flour with a teaspoon of balm from James Stone and I have the original here. There are actually only five copies of this in the world that are known about. One is in the British Library, there's one in the John Rylands, St Andrews University and in America there's two copies, one at the University of Chicago and another at the University of Yale. There is no better text that I have found that gives an understanding of the relationship between the brewer and the baker. And perhaps this relationship, when you read through this wonderful pamphlet, isn't altogether a very smooth relationship. In fact, there are little moments that it's quite spiky as the brewer expresses uh, a little bit of disbelief that he could actually turn a teaspoon of balm saying, for my part, I cannot conceive that such a small quantity could possibly have any effect on such a large body of flour. And the baker rather spikily returns to him, saying, well, it seems likely to me that you understand more of brewing than you do of baking. This banter between the baker and the brewer is altogether a very amusing insight into the relationship between them. It was, uh, they were interdependent upon each other in many ways. So in order to recreate this loaf as authentically as possible, we visited Hart's Family Brewery in Wellingborough, where we collected a teaspoon of balm. Well, actually, we collected slightly more than a teaspoon of balm, but we then used a teaspoon of balm to make this leaven according to James Stone's directions. James's directions effectively take a teaspoon of fresh beer balm which he adds in water and flour three times over, increasingly with larger and larger quantities, which then gets rid of the bitter smell of hops as the yeast populates the leaven. After three or four goes of this, and leaving the flour on top until the surface is cracked, you can see that this beer leaven is live. It's active, it's full of bubbles, and it's ready to bake with. I use a 75% hydration with the leaven to make sourdough in exactly the same way that I make my normal sourdough bread with. And because this one teaspoon of leaven has been increased in volume three times using this wonderful heritage flour, which is made up of lots of different varieties of wheat from that period. There is no trace of bitterness. And James Stone is correct in that by increasing the volume of the leaven three times over and refreshing it over a period of hours, you get a very active leaven. You make your sourdough in exactly the same way as you normally do. You mix your flour and your water. You leave it to auto lees so your leaven gets a chance to get a hold of your bread. 
and get a get a, a good build up of the natural yeasts in there and you just check it after an hour or so it should be bubbling away in there And then over the next couple of hours, you knead it very gently. And then form it into a round loaf. And you can see it's got a beautiful hydration. Lovely, bouncy loaf just being popped into the basket there. Give it a good dusting of flour. And then it's a matter of just waiting. And you wait while that beautiful beer balm gets that flavour and that delicious, beery, fruity, hot taste into your bread. And you bake it in the oven, as you would normally, for an hour or so until you get this glorious, crusty loaf. And you take it out. And there you have an amazing looking loaf with a wonderful crust with a deep flavour and this incredible texture and I think it's wonderful to be able to recreate a bread from the 18th century exactly as it would have been made. I'm quite sure that if James Stone were alive today he'd be very proud of this loaf.